Hello. We are now in Unit 3 in the week. And the focus for this unit is applying pedagogy in online learning. What are the learning outcomes? By the end of this unit, you will be able to select an online pedagogy for specific learning activity. You'll be able to justify the use of flipped classroom for an online course. You'll be able to justify the use of scaffolding technique for an online course. Now, let us look at the pedagogical approach in online course design. Because we're going to look at the pedagogy in two perspectives. First, we're going to look at the course design, and we're going to look at it again in the aspect of facilitation online. So looking at pedagogical approach in course design, there are three basic pedagogy that is being popularized. First is the transmissive, and we have the individual active, and we have the collaborative active. Now let's start with the transmissive. In the transmissive, you're taking knowledge in the form of lecture and presentation or reading or case notes, or giving detailed example, or even an experiment. And this could include a session of a course material or a session of an OER material. Or it could even be a whole book, a test. And it could be an audio. It could be a video. It could be slideshow or worksheets. So when you're talking about transmissive, the transmissive pedagogy for an online course is perceived from the teacher's angle. It is teacher-centered. It is the teacher that is looking at how will I transfer this knowledge? What mode can I use to transfer this knowledge? And in transferring the knowledge, the teacher could decide to use the lecture form, presentation, reading form. And if you're going to apply reading, where will the reading come from? Do you have an existing material? Are you going to look out for an open educational resource in the form of reading, in the form of video, in the form of slideshow? So when you say transmissive, it is teacher-centered. Then the second one is the individual active. As you are working and planning for an online course delivery, you consider this at a stage of planning. That time we are looking at the ADI model. You consider this where you are looking at the design stage. At the design stage, where you have brought out the activities, you need to know whether that activity is going to come in a transmissive form. Now, we're going to look at it. Is it individual active? When you are using individual active, that is learner-centered. And this gives opportunity to the student to play active role in their learning. The activity here are individual activities that will make that student work as individual. A student is left alone to interact with the content and applying what he or she understood or the knowledge gained back to do some other things that will be relating to using that knowledge. Then there are exercises such as practical because you want to test if the student, if the learner have gained sufficient knowledge that he or she can apply. And the way you could do this is maybe through practical quizzes, individual assignments. So where you are thinking of bringing in individual active, you have to think of learning activities that will make that happen. Then the final one on this approach, pedagogical approach for online course design is the collaborative active. The collaborative active allows students to interact with one another. It allows them to work with one another. They could work together in an activity. 
and it helps to bring social presence into an online course. It equally helps to bring in teaching presence. Because in the form of teaching presence, you can allow the learners to, uh, you know, to give feedback to one another. You can allow the learner to come in and do presentation by a way of even teaching others of the concepts he or she has gained. And you can allow them to assess one another. And you feel that when you are doing this, the learners are more comfortable because they are within their learning mates. And in this regard, they tend to learn more. So how do you bring this to play? And in bringing this up or choosing an activity that will make them to work together, come as a team and work, it depends again on the type of learning outcome you would have set, what you want them to achieve that will determine how many persons you're going to put in a group. So the way you can achieve this through an online course is one, you can have discussion forums, you can have collaborative assignments for them to work on. And given that collaborative assignment, you may not choose a leader for them or a repertoire for them. You may give that assignment, they work on it as a team, and they choose who will lead the team and who will make presentation. So with that, you are encouraging working together, collaboration. Again, during live section in the class, you can have a breakout room. You can do that very well if you are using Zoom and there are some other uh, video conferencing tools you could use. You break them out, you make them work in a group, you make them come out and do their presentations. So these are the three methods you could use. Transmissive, individual active, or collaborative active. But this has to come in at the stage of the design in your course. It has to be purposeful. It is not during facilitation that you start thinking of it, no. But if the material is already prepared and it's now for you to facilitate, you look out for it. To know what method have been embedded in that design. And again, this will affect the type of resource you're going to look for. For example, if it's going to be individual active, collaborative active, it will affect the type of open educational resources you are going to look out for that will support that. Sometimes you can get an open educational resource experiment that could support your learners in a course. But if you have not designed it such, and you don't know exactly what you're looking for, you may not know what to find. So thinking about how learners will interact with learning in an online course is critical. The selection of the method to apply is directed by the learning outcome. So it's the learning outcome that will make you to know, should I use transmissive? individual active or collaborative active. Now let us look at the second part, pedagogical approach in online course facilitation. In this area, we're going to look at two basic approaches. The two approaches we're going to look at is the flip classroom and the scaffolding. We're talking about the flip classroom. To flip the class, identify the activities that the learners will do before class, in class, and after class. Because when you are using the flip class method, it means within the process, you have a time that you're going to have a live meeting. That you will meet real time with your students. So if you have a time you will meet with the students, that time you are meeting with the student is referred to as a class. And that meeting time is the in class. So what will they do before they come to the live class and what will they do after the live class? So that is where you have before class, in class, and after class. 
This is required where you are blending live class. Maybe synchronous and asynchronous. So in this regard, you now look through the three pedagogies that we have discussed in the design stage. The transmissive, we have talked about individual active, and we have looked at the collaborative active. Now you pull them together and look around. Which of them will you apply before class, in class, and after the class? And looking through all of them, you will now be able to identify the right activity that you're going to give to the learners that they will work on before they come to class, and after the class, what they're going to do. Now, identify activities that are transmissive, individual or collaborative. So when you are able to build this and arrange, it makes your class seamless. So what do you do in a flip class? You don't come to the flip class to start teaching, no. You come to the flip class to discuss, to attend to area of challenge, because you would have given them Things to look at, for example, you'd have given them video to watch before they come to the live class. You'd have given them session of the material to read. You'd have given them maybe an assignment to what the uh, maybe a session to review. And they come to class to make presentation. And they come to class, you give them quiz. They do the quiz in the class. They come to class, you break them out in a group. You allow them to attend, you present them with a problem for them to solve. So the class time is not the time you start teaching the theory. It's not the time you start teaching the things that they need to know before applying. The time of the class is the application time and to resolve areas of challenge. Now the next one is the scaffolding. Scaffolding is a method of teaching. Scaffolding is a teacher-centered. And scaffolding demonstrates or solves problems for students and give opportunity to a student to try some similar problems. The student, the teacher would have solved a particular problem and give opportunity to students to solve similar problems. There are processes you need to follow when you are using scaffolding methods. The general scaffolding processes are one, break a task into smaller parts. Don't make it too heavy. Then verbalize the process. Promote cooperative learning through dialogue with peers, collaborative learning. Then use prompt, coaching, and models to support learning. Share knowledge, tips, and background knowledge is required. Now, what the scaffolding strategy for online learning? When you want to use scaffolding strategy for online learning, what are those things you need to give attention to? First, the scaffolding say, show and tell. Show and then tell. Now, what does that imply for an online learning? Let your content be interactive. Then the scaffolding says, leverage prior knowledge. And to do this, when you are designing your online content, ensure that your headings, the subheadings, they are interactive. They are giving good access to the course. And again, you can come up with an introductory video that will help to introduce what you don't came up with what the learners would have known before then. Then talk time. In the area of online, the talk time will be replaced with discussion forum, chat, hangout, and breakout during the live section. Then the scaffolding says, protect vocabularies. When you come to online tech, we use glossary to explain concepts, difficult words that we, the learner may find very end. The scaffolding look at the use of visuals. So you're going to use visuals. And in online learning also, we believe you can use pictures, diagrams, videos that we enable the learning to take place. But when you are using pictures and diagrams, you have to be mindful, you should not be distractive. It has to be to the point and it must be related. Then practice pausing. Learning must be presented in bits. In bits when you are going online. Then describe concept. You can use glossary to do that. 
Then strategy, again, scaffolding emphasizes promotes success. For online learning, you must give feedback. Not just feedback, constructive feedback to motivate learners. When you do this, then you are good to go with the use of scaffolding for online learning. In conclusion, choosing pedagogy for online learning starts at the design stage. The pedagogy you choose at the design stage requires a different level of pedagogy at the facilitation time to bring learning into reality. So when you are designing, choose a pedagogy. When you want to facilitate, choose another pedagogy. Without the pedagogy, the technology alone will not give you a quality online content. Thank you. Thank you.